Okay, so it's March 14th, 2024, and we've got some major severe weather to talk about. What you're looking at here is the latest SPC outlook for severe weather today, and it covers a very large area from Ohio all the way back down into Texas. We've got a slight risk of severe weather, and right smack dab in the middle of that down in Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Missouri, we've got an enhanced risk of severe weather today, and that is driven by a pretty significant chance for tornadoes. The big green blob that's going to be your 2% probability. The brown's going to be your 5%. And that yellow is going to be a 10% probability of seeing a tornado within 25 miles of any given point within that zone. And the dotted line area inside of that is a 10% hatched risk, meaning that some of those tornadoes that could happen today will be strong, producing EF2 damage or greater. So this is the kind of day where we go live on the main channel, the Ryan Hall Y'all main channel. We are going to be doing live weather coverage this evening, probably starting around 4 p.m. or so. We're going to go all throughout the evening with storm chasers on the ground. We're going to be covering the storms in Arkansas, Oklahoma, and also the ones up in the Ohio Valley as well, as I think that those are going to be pretty interesting. Outside of the tornado threat, there's a huge hail threat today. Last night, we had softball size hail up near Kansas City. I think we're going to see similar reports today, maybe around St. Louis, up towards Indianapolis, and especially back towards eastern Oklahoma, central and western Arkansas, Little Rock, up towards Pine Bluff. I think that you guys are going to be dealing with some massive hail today. We're talking about hail that will damage property. We're talking about some of these, you know, multi-million dollar disasters in towns that are unfortunate enough to get hit by the big hail storms. That's the kind of hail storms that we're talking about today. So make sure you're prepared for that. Even if you don't get a tornado today, some sort of significant severe weather is possible anywhere in the highlighted areas. Okay, so let's take a look at what the radar could look like later today to give you an idea of what this is going to potentially look like whenever we start the stream later about 1, 2 p.m. That's when storms are really going to get going out here in Oklahoma. We're going to see our first couple of supercells popping up out here. The big hail is going to start. We also might see a cluster of storms starting to pop up around St. Louis. And then we're going to see this lingering line of storms that's going to be exiting Indiana into Ohio. And this is going on right now. It's a little bit farther to the west. That's, you know, producing severe winds in some areas. And I'm actually really interested to see if after this line gets by this zone right here, here if the atmosphere actually destabilizes. So in order for these storms to pop up, like the model suggests that they will, this line is going to have to work by, do its job on the atmosphere, stabilize it and everything, and then the sun's going to have to come back up and the atmosphere is going to have to rapidly destabilize before these storms are allowed to pop up. I don't know if there's actually going to be that much time for that to happen. So that could save us, okay? We could not be dealing with these storms on this backside, but I'm a hundred percent certain that the ones farther to the south will be popping up. So we're going to hope that there's cloud cover, that line of storms that's moving through Indiana right now and in Illinois right now is going to kind of work over the atmosphere and keep storms from popping up. But if the sun does come back out and it does destabilize, this is what could happen. A very rapid development of supercells all across the Ohio Valley and then of course down into the south central U.S. as well. This means that we would have the maximum hail threat from western Ohio all the way down into southern Illinois, central Missouri and then of course into Oklahoma and Arkansas as well. At 7 p.m. tonight we've got from my rudimentary count here at least 15 supercells that could be producing large hail and tornadoes. This is just one model run. It's not exactly what the radar is going to look like tonight but this is a very interesting run. And if it does end up looking like this, it's going to be quite the busy night. So make sure that if you live in any of the potentially affected areas, you are weather aware. Supercells could be continuing as late as 9, 10, 11 p.m. tonight. Around 11 p.m. though, it is going to switch more to what I would call a uh, multicellular or linear event. And the tornado threat is going to go down. And we're mostly going to be concerned about damaging winds and just really heavy rain as we get into the early morning hours on Friday. And then eventually, you know, later, in the day on Friday, we're going to have a squall line go through Mississippi and Alabama, but that's uh, that's going to fade out and that's going to die out pretty quick. And the severe weather threat, in my opinion, on Friday is not going to be very elevated at all. That's why in this video, we are mainly focused on what's going on this afternoon. Okay, so if this actually happens, if we see scattered supercells widespread like this, we're definitely going to be dealing with some big time severe weather. This is something that I like to look at whenever I'm forecasting tornadoes. This is what we call the significant tornado parameter. This just kind of shows us the nature 
later juice, right? This shows us where conditions are favorable for tornado production. The big red blobs, that's where things are most favorable, essentially. We've got some pretty favorable air up here in Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana around 3 p.m. today, but we're probably not gonna have that many storms, okay? So you can have as much of this red stuff as you possibly can, but if there's no storms to interact with it, there's no tornadoes. But watch what happens. As we go later into the day, the storms start to pop up and there's still a pretty ample amount of tornado juice up there, especially in the Ohio Valley. Now, it still exists down here farther to the south as well, but not quite as much. And the reason I think that the Storm Prediction Center went with the higher tornado probabilities down here is just because of the certainty of the formation of the storms. Remember, we are 100% certain that we're going to have storms down here. We are not sure whether or not they're actually going to pop up up here in the Ohio Valley or not. If they do, I think the bigger tornado threat is going to be in Illinois, Indiana, and up towards that area, okay? It just depends on whether or not those storms actually pop up. But you can see really quickly, all of that favorable tornado juice gets eaten up by probably about 9 or 10 p.m., and then that's when the tornado threat starts to go down. It will linger in Arkansas. There still will be some sort of tornado threat in Arkansas, West Tennessee, later tonight into the early morning hours tomorrow, but eventually it all goes away, and we're left with just some general garden variety, regular springtime thunderstorms. And to track this even farther into the future, that dying squall line will cross through the Carolinas and Georgia tomorrow evening, probably producing some gusty winds, but for the most part, it's going to be completely out of our hair by Friday night and Saturday. It looks mostly quiet everywhere, except for over here in Texas, some returning rain showers will be kind of streaming up from the south, and then we're going to have a clipper moving through the Great Lakes region up into Canada, and this is actually going to start the process of sending in some much colder air into the eastern U.S. And yes, despite all of the warm temperatures that we have been experiencing over here in the southeast and in the east, the next six to ten days, especially between March 19th and March 23rd, look to be below average, maybe even significantly below average down in the southeastern U.S. as that lobe of cold air kind of settles into the Appalachian region after this storm goes by. But look over here to the west, okay? We've got a big ridge forming back in the west, meaning things are going to warm up over here, and eventually that will propagate to the east, and we're going to go through this cycle again where another big cold bowl of air is going to come down and we'll have more thunderstorms and stuff, but that probably won't be until late March. Okay, so that's pretty much all I have for you today. I just wanted to very quickly come on here and tell you the latest about this uh, potential severe weather and tornado outbreak later today. I will be live on the Ryan Hall Y'all channel. Make sure you're subscribed over there with notifications on. Probably going to be going live starting around 3 or 4 p.m. Could be later, could be earlier. Just make sure you're subscribed. You'll get a notification as soon as we go live. It's probably going to be a long deal. Like if that tornado threat persists into eastern Arkansas and West Tennessee tonight, we could be on the air until midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. or so. So this could be close to a 12-hour marathon storm coverage thing. But hopefully those storms don't form in the Ohio Valley. The system goes linear once it gets past Little Rock and we're just live for a couple of hours. It's an easy day. It's not a dreadful day in terms of severe weather. All right. I'll see you guys then. Bye. Ooh.